So you're thinking about moving to South Florida, and why wouldn't you be? This video is all about what living in Parkland, Florida is really like, specifically the pros and cons. And as a former Parkland resident and somebody who grew up here, I can give you the real nitty gritty. A lot has changed since I was the second graduating class from Stoneman Douglas. My Parkland roots run deep and I'm still very connected within the community and will always have Eagle pride. I hope you enjoy my video about the pros and cons of living in Parkland, Florida. With the real estate market heating up and what feels like a mass exodus from everywhere, now more than ever I'm getting calls and texts from people up north and from all over the country looking to relocate and move down to South Florida, which we absolutely love. So if there's ever anything in the world that we can do to help you, please call, text, leave a comment down below, and we will be happy to help. And please claim your free South Florida city and relocation guide by clicking the free city guide in the banner at the top of the channel or in the links below, and we will send you one right away. It will tell you everything that you want to know about every city in South Florida. Boom! Boom, we're live. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Igo. I'm a full-time, full-service realtor with an all-star team that services all of South Florida. I make content to showcase exactly what it's like to live in South Florida, and I'll occasionally add my opinion or thoughts on really anything I think will help educate or inform to help empower you to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. We speak to so many people that are totally fed up with the high cost of living and restrictions elsewhere that I decided to make this video to share what living in Parkland is really like, specifically highlighting the pros and the cons. The city of Parkland has a population of approximately 32,000, and it's located in the northwest corner of Broward County. It was established in 1963. The city has grown from very humble beginnings while remaining environmentally proud and is home to nine parks and five public schools. The city has been named the best city in Florida in which to raise a family by Wallet Hub. Parkland is known for its exceptional schools, so pro number one of living here is excellent education. One of the main reasons people move to Parkland is because the public schools are so well rated. There are three elementary schools, and one of the benefits of living here and the way the zoning works is you get the option to pick and choose based on the availability of which schools you want to send your kid to. So if one of the elementary schools has a better program or your children have friends in another elementary school, it is possible to get lucky. If there's availability, you can apply and be reassigned to a different elementary school. Now you've got Heron Heights, Park Trails, and River Glades Elementary Schools, which are all excellent. You've got West Glades Middle, and of course, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Let's hear some of that Eagle pride. Go Eagles! There are also some excellent private school options in Parkland, which include Mary Help of Christians Catholic School, which is K through eight. You've got Cole Tikva Preschool, and you've got Somerset Academy, which is also K through eight. And I'll include some links below so you can learn more about them. All of these schools are highly rated and they are excellent places for your kids to learn. I grew up in Cypress Head. And as I mentioned, I graduated from Stoneman Douglas. The people, education, sports, clubs, recreation are all world-class. Educational opportunity is the number one reason why most people move to Parkland. Parkland is incredibly family friendly and it's an incredibly tight knit yet open and welcoming community. The number two pro about living in Parkland is that it is so family friendly. Typically buyers who are looking for the best schools have children. So with that in mind, it stands to reason there are a lot of families that live here. Most families want their kids to have a warm, friendly, safe childhood with lots of diversity and opportunity. Living in Parkland provides exactly that lifestyle. There are tons of parks and activities from Little League Baseball, football, soccer, basketball, everything and anything. And it's all very family friendly. It's a great place to raise your family. Parkland real estate, at least in my mind, is grouped into two different sections, old and new. When I grew up here in Parkland, it was essentially a one road town, which was Holmberg Road. Most homes and communities were off of Holmberg. The homes in the lots were humongous, and they feel like you're living in a very rural community. In some places, it feels very equestrian. But as Parkland grew and developers came in and land sought its highest value, the newer west side was developed and extended. So what was once cow pastures and swamp land is now brand new or newer luxury communities. You've got four seasons at Parkland, Mira Largo, Cascada, The Fall, Chateau, Parkland Isles, Parkland Bay, Parkland Reserve, Land Golf and Country Club, Parkland Bay, and of course, Heron Bay. 
None of them existed when I lived here in Parkland. They are super nice, but many of the new homes have less land, are very nice, but they have a different feel to the older Parkland, which is closer to 441 and more out east. More established communities which have more land and feel less cookie cutter include Cypress Head, Cypress K, Turnbridge, Parkside Estates, Turnbridge Estates, Tall Pines, Fox Ridge, The Ranches, and Meadow Run, to name a few. There's also 255 plus communities in Parkland, so if your parents or grandparents want to be close to your kids or their grandkids, they can live in a very nice luxury area. There are currently 255 and over communities and they're building more. In fact, they're building everywhere. So if new construction is your thing, please reach out to me and watch my video, which is up here about working with builders directly. And that way you'll know what to watch out for. Builders have one thing in mind always, which of course is their bottom line. So if you want to ensure that your bottom line is protected, please give me a call and I'll be happy to advocate on your behalf. There are lots of different luxury options for the 55 and up crowd that want to live in a nice safe place close to the grandkids. Pro number three is proximity to highways. Translation, less commute time. Parkland is close to all major highways. You can get just about anywhere you want to be relatively quickly because the highways are easily accessible. Sawgrass will get you to the Turnpike or 95 in a jiffy. That's right, I said jiffy. I'm bringing it back. Pro number four is safety. Parkland is a very safe place to live. The crime rate in Parkland is almost non-existent. Parkland is consistently rated one of the top places to raise a family in the country. It's a very safe and very family-friendly place to live. Now, full disclosure, yes, there's some minor teenage nonsense, but for the most part, it's minor stuff, usually crimes of opportunity. So pro tip, lock your doors, don't leave your wallet or your cell phone out to tempt a would-be thief, or it could be gone in a jiffy. You see what I did there? You don't really see home invasions or violence. All right, pro numero cinco. And shout out to my former Spanish teacher, Miss Salvat. What a buena day. Otherwise known as the day we were only allowed to speak Spanish in her class, it just finally paid off. Ir Aguila. And I'm sure I messed that up. Go Eagles! All right, pro number five. Parkland homes tend to be newer and slightly larger compared to surrounding cities. Parkland has many new neighborhoods that were just completed or will be completed soon. Most were built in 2010 or newer, although as I mentioned before, there are some older, more established communities like Cypress Head, which is where I grew up. And they've got massive lots. Most of those homes are either newer or totally gutted and redone. You're gonna get more bang for your buck in Parkland as far as property is concerned. The same size properties in Boca Raton are way more expensive and likely significantly older. You're gonna get a much newer and bigger home on a much larger lot compared to Boca and Parkland. All right, with all that in mind, and as great as Parkland is, it isn't perfect. So let's discuss some of the cons here. Con numero uno is home prices. The median home price in Parkland is north of 800,000. So while you do get more bang for your buck, Parkland starts at a much higher price. Single family homes are expensive and anything under 800,000 will likely be gobbled up instantly. So if you find one, you should buy it immediately. There are also some townhouse and condo options too, which are slightly less expensive, but they aren't exactly cheap either. In about 400,000 and up. Parkland is very affluent and filled with professionals. Your neighbors are going to include doctors, lawyers, and business owners. There's no easy way to say it, but living in Parkland is not cheap. You've got to have significant income and bank to be able to afford Parkland. You will get more bang for your buck in terms of home and land. And to put it in perspective, any relatively similar home closer to the beach out east is going to be way more expensive. And let me just emphasize that there, way more expensive. Con number two is Parkland's west location. It's remote and for some, it's geographically undesirable. Parkland was designed out of the hustle and bustle intentionally. So it's gonna take you a little bit further to get to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, or West Palm Beach, but it's intentional. It was designed to have a rural country feel and lifestyle. Life feels a little bit slower and more family oriented here than other places. And there's no place in South Florida like it. So if city living and hustle and bustle is your thing, Parkland probably is not the right fit. Con number three, affordability. Entry level homes are hard to come by. They are rare, but they do exist. An entry level home in Parkland starts 
at roughly 500,000. And again, if you find one, buy it immediately because it will not last. There are simply not a lot of inexpensive options to choose from. So if you're looking for an inexpensive deal, it's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. With the market the way it is right now, Parkland probably is not the right fit. There are much more affordable options in other cities that are close by. Now, speaking of which, make sure you claim your free city guide in the banner or at the links below to learn about every city in South Florida. All right, con number four, there's no real active nightlife scene. There's a handful of shops, there's a little bit of retail and some restaurants within the city, but it's numbered to maintain the rural feel. Now, I don't wanna send anybody into caffeine shock or withdrawal, and right now I'm really just speaking to myself because I must be caffeinated at all times, but fun fact, there's only one Starbucks in all of Parkland. If an active nightlife scene is your thing with lots of bars and restaurants, Parkland probably is not for you. Call me and we can check out Delray Beach. Now I can promise you you're close to everything that you would want or need, but you're going to have to drive a little bit further to get it. Coral Springs, Boca or Coconut Creek and some of the other surrounding cities are 10, 15 and 20 minutes away. Anything you want exists in those cities. And to be clear, it's not like you're out here on Hope Island in the middle of nowhere and you can't get anything. It's just very intentionally planned. Commercial development and big malls are not part of Parkland's DNA. There's an easy fix for that. 15, 20 minute drive gets you to Boca Town Center Mall, which is a world-class five-star mall. You're 20 to 30 minutes from the beach, 30 minutes to Fort Lauderdale, 45 minutes to Miami, 45 minutes to West Palm. So you're relatively close to anything that you could ever want, but you do have to drive a little bit further to get there. It's a lifestyle choice that residents of Parkland are happy to make because of the quality of living in Parkland being so special. It's set up specifically for families to thrive and be happy. Now, many of the neighborhoods in Parkland are gated and have HOA fees. And this could be a pro or a con depending on what you're looking for. They are very secure, very private. They provide world-class resort style amenities the HOA fees cover a lot, featuring resort style pools, social clubhouses, gyms, tennis, basketball courts, golf. Really, they've got everything you'd ever want in a luxury lifestyle. Now, I hope you enjoyed my Living in Parkland pros and cons video. Please start a conversation in the comments down below. Do you love it? Do you want to move here? Do you have any questions? Who grew up in Parkland, I know it's an amazing place to live and raise a family. We love living in Florida and suspect you will too. But the truth is demand is so high and inventory is so low that if you want to live here, you must contact me now. Homes go very fast. There is no time to waste. As a local expert, I typically know what's coming on the market before it even hits the MLS. And once it does, it's typically way too late to get involved. Over the last few years, we've helped hundreds of people buy and sell homes right here in South Florida, and we absolutely love it. As 40-year Florida residents, we know all the best places to fit your desired lifestyle and budget. So if you're even thinking about moving to Parkland or anywhere in Florida, you've got to reach out to me. Call, text, DM, send a carrier pigeon, a smoke signal, by any means necessary. Because we've got your back when it comes to moving to or living in Florida. And until next time, Go Eagles!